everyone, and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living Sarasota. We're here to support you in finding a personal relationship with the God of your understanding and discovering what you already know. My name is Kathleen Frankert, and I'm a licensed spiritual practitioner here at the Center. I greet you today with Namaste. Namaste is the Sanskrit word that means the divinity in me recognizes and honors the divinity in you. Let's begin today by joining our voices to read aloud our vision and mission. The words can now be seen on your screen. Our vision is empowering spiritual growth as a loving, inclusive worldwide community. And this is our mission. We do this by teaching signs of mind principles and other life affirming spiritual truths. We explore, we learn, we grow, we connect, honoring all paths to God. We offer in-person and online weekly services, classes, workshops, affirmative prayer support, and other spiritual tools. We create opportunities for joyful social connection, community outreach, and service. We celebrate the awakening of our innate spiritual magnificence. And now as we move into our time of prayer, I invite you to settle in, connect with the breath, Close your eyes or soften your focus as we turn within. Take in this meditative music to calm your mind and open your heart as Bob Teasdale performs a Karen Drucker song, One Breath at a Time. One breath at a time. Breathe into that place where life is happening right now, this precious, present moment. Centered now, I gratefully recognize the one power and one presence in all life that is as close as the very breath I breathe. I am ever one with its infinite love, its peace, joy, and wholeness. As this is true for me, 
it is true for all hearing these words, for everyone, everywhere. I know that this precious flow of life-giving breath represents the grace-giving energy of God, supporting me in my every need, my every challenge, my every opportunity. God withholds nothing from itself or its creation and therefore withholds nothing from me. As I claim the bountiful blessings of spirit, I feel the influx of its good and am energized and awakened to its possibilities in my life. I affirm right now, I deserve and accept the good life intends for me. It is uniquely mine, and I know that accepting my good cannot diminish the infinite supply available to all. Recognizing this prosperous blessing of life itself, I accept and expect its wonderful and beneficial results with gratitude. As I release this word to the loving law, I know that all is good, for all is God expressing now in me, for me, and through me. I declare it to be so, and so it is. Today, our founding minister and spiritual director, Reverend Karen Wolfson, is with us. Her talk is entitled, Ouch! Spiritual Growing Pains. But first, it's my pleasure to welcome Bob Teasdale to sing a fun and funky tune by Melissa Felipe, kicking and screaming on the road to transformation. Take it away, Bob. I used to disown myself, I didn't know I was frightened. I wouldn't let myself get angry, it wasn't enlightened and Then my friend told me to really be free I've got to be embracing every part of me So even though sometimes it feels like pulling teeth I go kicking and screaming down the path of transformation Myself and my dark side Giving me my information I'm learning to love every part of myself Even parts I've hidden on the highest shelf I'm kicking and screaming down the path of transformation I like to think of myself as wise, full of insights so rare I think I really go with the flow and I know I will stay there I get to thinking I could handle any old change Then something new shows up and life gets rearranged then suddenly I'm struggling, I'm feeling so strange I go kicking and screaming down the path of transformation My higher self and my dark side giving me my information I'm learning to love every part of myself even parts I've hidden on the highest shelf I'm kicking and screaming down the path of transformation Sometimes it's a hard road This working to become enlightened Can't say it always makes me rejoice But looking at the options is still my choice it's my choice I go kicking and screaming down a path of transformation My higher self and my dark side giving me my information I'm learning to love every part of myself Even parts I've hidden on the highest shelf I'm kicking and screaming down the path of 
transformation Yes, I'm kicking and screaming down the path of transformation I go kicking and screaming down the path of transformation Oh my, can you relate to the words of that song? I sure can. Kicking and screaming down the road to transformation. That's what I'm going to be talking about today, but I've given my message a title that is maybe a tad more dignified. The title is, Ouch! Spiritual Growing Pains. It seems I feel inspired to revisit this idea every spring, because spring is a time when we see the magnificence of everything in nature waking up and budding, blossoming and, well, growing, transforming. And speaking of growing and even transformation, be sure to consider the upcoming class being offered by our spiritual practitioner and marvelous teacher, Kathleen Franker. This class is called Your Bigger Life, and it's about identifying what you want more of and what you want less of in your life and then setting an intention to move clearly toward what you want more of. And this is just a teaser that I'm giving you here. There's so much more to the class. It's fabulous, and it starts on April 20th on Zoom. So be sure to register by April 16th, and you will see details at the end of this broadcast. Your Bigger Life. Now let's check in. Happy Spring! Have you been noticing that? I'm sure you have, that wondrous spring feeling of new life, nature waking up. It seems like even the air smells different. And I'm so happy knowing you are out there no matter the season, winter, summer, spring, fall. Each one of you know that. You know, I think about you all the time and I ask the question in my mind some way or the other, how, how are you doing? If you're watching us on Facebook Live, we enjoy your letting us know where you are and your comments, so please keep those coming. I just love when you let us know you're out there. And to you, our team of financial contributors, you continue to be an absolutely essential part of all that makes it possible for us to share our message, our caring, and our connection. And we'll continue doing this for the next several months. So thank you for standing by us. And thank you all for joining with us today. As I think of you, I continue to affirm and see you as vibrantly healthy and abundantly supported in every way. So, ouch, spiritual growing pains. <laughs> they can surprise us, they can sneak up on us. And the spiritual principles we explore each week are always about transforming our lives in very practical ways, wonderful ways, as we discover our infinite possibilities. You know, change your thinking, change your life. You are enough. There is enough. All things are possible. You know, what a breath of fresh air to experience our oneness with the one, God by whatever name, knowing that we have that infinite love and intelligence and support 24-7. And as we progress on this path, it seems like miracles happen. The path to transformation. And then, thud life gets rocky. We hit a speed bump, a disappointment, a loss, a seemingly insurmountable problem, and, and we're gobsmacked. That's what an English friend of mine taught me. The word is gobsmacked. We are stunned and just knocked over because we wonder, what happened? Well, here's a suggestion. When that happens, how about this? Rather than moaning, oh no, here I go again. Oh yes, here I grow again. All right, don't hate me for that. But really, why, why do that? Because why respond that way? Because growth is life's never ending, inevitable invitation to you and me. Oh, I know, if you're like me, your response to one of those moments might be rather weak and shaky and begrudging and maybe even a little snarky, but hey, it's a start. <laughs> now, here's what's in the fine print. 
the fine print of our teaching and of life. It's this. As Ernest Holmes wrote, the Ernest Holmes, the architect of our philosophy, wrote, nature won't let you stay in one place too long. She will let you stay just long enough to gather the experience necessary for the unfolding and advancement and transformation, I'm going to add that, of your soul. So when growth comes, welcome it with a smile in your heart and a song on your lips. Now, here's how Melissa Felipe's song that you heard earlier, how it expresses this, and oh, again, can we relate? The song said, I like to think of myself as wise, full of insight, so rare. I think I really go with the flow. I get to thinking I can handle any old change. Then something new shows up and life gets <clears throat> rearranged. Suddenly I'm struggling and feeling so strange as I go kicking and screaming down the road to transformation. Now you heard earlier our center's vision begins with empowering spiritual growth. And that means we're inviting you to join with us in being empowered and not defeated through spiritual growth and all that goes with it, the growing pains. Growth into what? Well, into more and more and more of who you already are. Your amazing possibilities. Now the song said, sometimes it's a hard road, this working to become enlightened. Can't say it always makes me rejoice, but looking at the options, it's still my choice. So I go, kicking and screaming down the path of transformation. So I have four things to say about spiritual growing pains and their ouch factor today. And the first is, let's get this out of the way right now. It is okay to kick and scream. I give you permission. Or maybe your style would be not to kick and scream, but to pout and do a slow, long sulk. <laughs> well, her song said, I wouldn't let myself be angry. It wasn't enlightened. And then my friend told me to really be free. I've got to be embracing every part of me. So even though sometimes it feels like pulling teeth, I go kicking and screaming down the path of transformation. I like the way she put it. Now, in the April issue of Science of Mind magazine, my friend and colleague, Reverend Sally Robbins, wrote a wonderful article. It's titled, Can You Live in the Not Knowing? And she tells her story about one of those speed bumps. And she starts it by saying this, she's quoting, We've selected another candidate. You did not get the job. <laughs> well, Sally writes, I heard that. I thank that employer for considering me. I hung up the phone and burst into tears. Ouch. Growing opportunity. <laughs> she could likely have been thinking that the new job would be evidence of her being on the path for growing and for transformation. I mean, I would have thought that. And Sally continues, I was telling a wise friend this my story and, my, and, and how I had sobbed after losing the possible position. And my friend said this, your reaction was not about, getting, about not getting the job, it was about dashing your hope that you would no longer have to live in the not knowing. And Sally writes, her accuracy was stunning. Her accuracy was absolutely spot on. She continues and she says, those of us on the spiritual path eventually find ourselves in the not knowing. It's uncomfortable, sometimes terrifying, and it's essential to our growth as spiritual beings. Did you hear that? Essential to our growth as spiritual beings. And she says it's there that we learn to embrace the unknown and lean into trusting the spiritual unfoldment, the growth that is taking place even if we cannot see it. And so I can relate to what she wrote next. Staying in the not knowing is Olympic grade work. 
I'll say that again. Staying in the not knowing is Olympic grade work. It requires a willingness to surrender to what is while knowing our good is forever coming to us and through us. Now, this process of growth and the many ouch moments brought to mind children. Uh, children learning to stand and walk. I mean, it's inevitable. And they, they, they go from, you know, crawling on their tummy to crawling to then trying to stand and then to walk. They fall down and they cry and they wail and, and then they inevitably get up and try again because it's the impulse of life in them to simply grow. Growing pains. So the second thing I'd like to say to you about this business of growing pains and transformation is, uh, well, speaking of walking, as I was saying about the kids, children, I recently saw an ad really caught my eye. It was for a brand of shoes and it said, life's a journey, wear great shoes. <laughs> life's a journey, wear great shoes. I love that. Well, what does that have to do with spiritual growing pains? Well, you know, it's a great metaphor. When you were a child, do you remember when you'd start to outgrow your shoes and they'd feel tight and probably hurt your feet? So it was growing pains, ouch. But it was indicating something natural and the anticipation of a new pair of shoes was really quite cool. And then have you noticed the new shoes, even as an adult, are a bit uncomfortable uncomfortable at first, but we don't leave them in the closet because of that. No, we want to wear them. We're eager to wear our new shoes. And now part of growing into something new, sure, the shoes are a little tight. So we put up with the discomfort and soon the fit is perfect. And we barely remember how uncomfortable they were at first. Wear great shoes and realize that's an example of growing pains and they're not a bad thing. Now, the third thing I'd like to say and think about uh, as far as our spiritual growing opportunities, this past year's huge challenges, the pandemic, the social and political chaos, talk about kicking and screaming down the path. But if we quietly reflect on who we are now compared to a year ago, and think about yourself and who you were a year ago, where you were in your head, your heart, your actions, your behaviors, your life, we can start to see the transformation, the ways that we have grown. Oh, it hasn't been easy and maybe we've gone backward in some ways, but we've grown. Think about that and think about what we've learned. Of course, the common thread to all of this is that everything in life is an opportunity for growing, for learning, for transformation. Everything. Take a breath. <laughs> I found this, this lovely piece that someone wrote about the transformation from a caterpillar to a butterfly. And she wrote, Nobody ever talks about this part. You know, the part where you're no longer a caterpillar and you're not yet a butterfly. You don't know who you are and you don't know where you're going. All you know is that every fiber of your being is calling for transformation, for disruption, for a revolution of your spirit. So surrender, break down. This is not the death of you. This is the dying of who you once were. This is your rebirth, darling. And these are called growing pains. And the fourth thing I'd like to say to you about this is speaking of that amazing process of the caterpillar to the butterfly, there's one most vital piece and that is this. You can fly, but that cocoon has got to go. So when we're growing, some of those growing pains show up because the growth process requires letting go of the old and that can be painful. 
not only the ouch in the unfamiliarity of the new, but the ouch of having to release the old. Old habits, old way of maybe responding to problems and difficulties, old resentment, old addictive behaviors, old relationships. The author Richard Bach wrote it this way. He said, it must happen to us all. We pack up what we've learned so far and leave the familiar behind. No fun, that shearing separation, but somewhere within we must dimly know that saying goodbye to safety brings the only security we will ever know. To learn anything, you must put aside the safety of your ignorance. Mm. Put aside the safety of your ignorance. The cocoon has got to go. But don't despair about this letting go process. Here's a secret. I call it the replacement process. And actually it turns out Emmett Fox happens to be the author of a book that Kathleen's class will be using called The Mental Equivalent. Mental Equivalent is the way you are picturing something before you're actually experiencing it. And, and often those become habitual. And often they're not necessarily what we want to keep playing around and around in our minds. So the question is, and he uses the word expunge, I like that. He says, how do you expunge that old mental equivalent? Or in the letting go process, as Richard, ba as Richard Bach was writing. You don't get rid of it or expunge it by fighting it or even resisting it, but by replacing it with a new one. Aha. So even as you're growing, the old must fall away. So I'm reminding you that releasing stuff, it's part of the growth process, but just as in nature, as the new emerges, the old must fall away. I find that to be kind of a relief, don't you? I mean, I don't have to wait until everything is all cleaned up and gone before I can look to the new. Sally Robbins continued in her article talking about this and the letting go. She said, I, come to, I have come to realize what I perceived as loss in my life was simply another layer of awakening. The dismantling of my world created disorientation and I longed for the old familiar ways that had seemed to work. But what I lost was who I thought I was. And here's the great news. What I've gained is that I'm so much more than that original idea. So there it is. Instead of, oh no, here I go again. I want you to start practicing with, oh yes. Here I grow again. <laughs> and here's one more secret. Just be willing. In fact, maybe just be willing to be willing. Be willing to grow, knowing that there will be growing pains and that that's a good sign. Reverend Michael Beckwith said it this way. He said, where there is willfulness, there's a wall. But where there is willingness, there's a way. So take that to heart as Bob sings us into this week with a song by J.D. Martin and Jan Garrett. Simply, I'm willing. And wear great shoes. <laughs> I'll see you soon. Change my life, willing to shine a little light. I know the change may not come today, but it'll be worth the wait. Cause I'm a willing, I'm going. Driver's seat, yeah, I'm a willing to change.
to change my life Well, yeah, to shine a little light I know the change may not come today But it'll be worth the wait Spending some time alone Way out of my comfort zone I can't keep doing the same old thing And expect it to turn out a different way Hey, I'm a willing To change my life Willing To shine a little light I know the change may not come to teacher and time is my friend I'm gonna follow my heart to the end ain't no stop sign on this road the further I get the light of my load I'm a willing Thanks, Bob. Your music does so much to lift our hearts and connect us with spirit as only music can. And Reverend Karen, as always, thank you for another message to inspire and lift us on our spiritual path. We're so grateful for your insights and wisdom. The Center for Spiritual Living Sarasota is pleased to support you with prayer, inspiration, encouragement, and opportunities for virtual community and connection. Now it's time to share our offering that supports our ability to continue to be here for you. There are three easy ways to contribute. On your screen, you'll see our website where you can select the donate button, which allows you to contribute via, via PayPal or by credit card, or you may mail a check to our address shown there on our website, or you may arrange automatic contributions through your own online banking. Now I invite you to Place your gift over your heart, blessing it as you share it, and know this with me. My gift goes forth to heal, to bless, and to prosper, and the divine flow returns it to me multiplied abundantly. And now let us declare together our offering affirmation. I give thanks that I may share of my good, my love, and my support. Thank you so much. I have a few announcements to share today. Do you have a prayer request? Here on our website, www.cslsarasota.com, you will find the green prayer request button where you may seek prayer support for any challenge you may be experiencing. We have four licensed spiritual practitioners, Ron Frost, Jim Grove, Jaron Nelson, and me, who are available to know and affirm spiritual truth with and for you. Here on our website, you can also sign up to receive our weekly email newsletter or check out our Facebook page for posts about upcoming events. Speaking of upcoming events, I'm pleased to share about a new class I will be facilitating starting Tuesday, April 20th. It's called Your Bigger Life. This class will empower you in exploring how to get more of what you want in life, setting powerful intentions, and using spiritual law to support all of that. You'll even create a plan to activate your intention for what's new and next in your life. 
And you'll be doing all of this with a great group of fellow seekers on the spiritual path. It is sure to be a rich and rewarding experience. We'll meet from 7 to 9 p.m. via Zoom, so you can join us from anywhere. And there's no prerequisite for this class and no membership requirement in this or any center. And whether you're new to this teaching or have taken other classes or just are curious, I guarantee this will be a valuable contribution to your spiritual growth. Please visit our website, www.cslsarasota.com for the current email newsletter that includes a flyer about the class for the details. Or you can email me at the address shown if you have questions or would like to register. I hope you'll accept this invitation for experiencing your bigger life. I'm also excited to announce a free workshop series we're kicking off this month. It's called Healthy Mind, Healthy Body, Healthy Life. And it features three members of our spiritual community sharing their amazing expertise, wisdom, and insights. Workshops are In the Flow on Saturday, April 17th with Dr. Harvey Kaltzis, a doctor of Chinese medicine and acupuncture. On May 15th, Dr. Lisa Lassard, a life coach with a PhD in holistic health sciences, will, will present Creating an Effective Habitual Thought Foundation. And on June 19th, the topic will be Getting Unstuck, the Keys to Unlocking Your True Potential with Ron Frost, a life coach, author, speaker, and licensed spiritual practitioner here at our center. During his workshop this Saturday, April 17th at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, Dr. Kaltzis will reveal the nature of the healing energy always available to us and which forms the very basis of life itself. You will learn pr practical ways to get and stay healthy using your own body's innate ability to heal itself. Besides being a longtime Chinese medicine practitioner, Dr. Kaltzis is also a respected and renowned teacher, lecturer, and author on a wide range of topics related to his field and particularly the topic he will be presenting in the workshop. You won't want to miss this unique opportunity to learn from one of the best. All workshops will be offered free via Zoom. To register, check our email newsletter in your email box. And if you're not on our email list, find the newsletter on our website or check out our Facebook page for registration information. Mark your calendar now to attend all these wonderful free workshops brought to you by CSL Sarasota. Our spiritual living circle continues via Zoom on Wednesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. Licensed spiritual practitioner Jim Grove leads a thought-provoking and lively discussion of an article from this month's Science of Mind magazine. The topic this week is We're All Actors, based on an interview with Don Miguel Ruiz, author of the Four Agreements. It should be a great discussion. To participate, email Jim and he will send you all the details, including the discussion guide and a copy of the article. Newcomers are always welcome, so check it out this week. Did you know we have prayer and inspiration support for you on demand 24-7? It's called Pop-Up Prayers, available on our Facebook page or YouTube channel. Each week, Jaron Nelson, one of our licensed spiritual practitioners posts a short inspirational message and affirmative prayer on a different topic. Check out the library of messages for virtually any spiritual intention you may have or challenge you are facing. You will be glad you did. And now as we conclude our sacred time together, let us affirm we move forward in health, love, joy, and perfect peace. I invite you to listen or join in singing our closing song, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Thanks so much for being with us.
Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every breath I take, let this be my solemn vow to take.